So now in this video we come back to the circuit of the last video that we did. So this is a 555 timer wired in by stable mode. The output stays in its condition unless we hit a button then it will switch to the other position. So it has two stable positions. I'm the unstable one. I set it or reset it. So set, reset. And in any case, the LEDs are not very bright, as you can see there. My lamp is at its lowest setting. If I set it to a brighter setting, the camera would adjust. They would look even more dim. And uh, But unfortunately, I can't uh, go to medium or high with the lamp right now. The light just starts flickering like crazy. I need to get a new lamp. But in any case, the point of this circuit was we have a transistor here. So it's not part of the circuit yet. It's on its own with power going across it, but it's off. We can take a 10 kilo ohm resistor, as I value doesn't really matter, but we just need a very little amount of current to the base of the transistor. I was hiding the uh, LEDs, but they turned on when I connected the resistor. So now they turn off. You can see that they are brighter. So let's zoom back and look at why. So we have five volts at the rail. That's both rails. It's a breadboard power supply set to five volts two LEDs in uh, series, they're going to block, we're going to see about 3.4 volts. Let's get the voltage of the uh, two LEDs. When we come to the resistor, which is at the output, you can see it's only about 3.7 volts at uh, the output, 3.6 and a half for the most part. And so if we yank this resistor, that lightens up the load a bit. We still have this one, but it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And you can see 3.6 if we yank this one. So it doesn't take much of a load to really drop that uh, voltage. With no load, we have about 4.5 volts. So we're lucky to get 4.5 volts out of this. And it looks like even a small load drops it to 3.6. So that's, uh, that's really pathetic. So in any case, we looked at this in the last video. We're not going to uh, really talk about this anymore. Just kind of a review or... Just an update of what's going on if you did not see the last video. So the transistor became a switch. We just had to give it enough current for it to saturate, to turn on as much as it can. We put a little current through base to emitter. Base is the middle pin, emitter is the bottom pin. And uh, that allows a multiple amount of current, probably hundreds of times, one or two hundred times maybe, the current to go from collector to emitter but the load is limiting the current below a uh, large multiple of the current going from base to emitter so the transistor is conducting more than the load needs so that means the load ends up limiting the current down there so I got asked a question about this circuit and uh, it's really not a bad question what if we put the load on the emitter side and I wasn't asked that really they just mentioned they tried that so we're going to look at what happens. First let's turn the power off. We're going to remove uh, this resistor. We're going to shuffle the load. So first we have to remove this jumper. I'm going to remove it completely and uh, pull out the LEDs and their protective resistor. And we're going to take an orange jumper here. First let's move the transistor over one spot. I think that will help a lot. So over a little bit more and we'll bend it back and we'll put an orange jumper from the collector to the positive rail right there so we still got positive coming to the collector now we're going to add an LED behind it right there so now the long lead the anode still going towards the positive side remember LEDs are a type of diode they only conduct in one direction when they conduct though they light up it's really nice so we'll uh, put that down there and then the next one in series with it again so we'll have the same four components in series. So it does kind of make sense. You would think it might work, but we'll see what happens with, with an actual circuit. Now we'll take the one kilo ohm resistor, go to the same rail, and uh, go to the negative side of the power supply. I think it'll go there. So you can see it goes to the cathode of that LED to the uh, negative over there. And let's get our base resistor going to the output third pin down of the uh, 555 timer right there and we're going to turn the power on 
and uh, hit the set button and you may have noticed a little glow right there but uh, not much now it's far worse than what we have over here and since we're gonna get such a weak signal though we might get a little better if we ain't that one and we did so so it's not as bad but still we're worse off than with the switch we'll look at that uh, coming up so with uh, this right now let's go back and measure voltages so let's get those baseline voltages again we have the uh, voltage of the power supply there and then this one this is the low voltage we did not like uh, 3.7 volts the LEDs aren't very bright so we wired a switch but in this case we wired the switch wrong we actually wired an emitter follower or common collector it's a well-known circuit used a lot but not in this situation so we want to switch not an emitter follower let's look at the voltage you can see they're really dim so it's going to be nothing across the uh, LEDs just a spec so 3.1 across the uh, LEDs and the resistor but uh, we got the same voltage across the LEDs for the most part just a very tiny voltage across the resistor which it's a one kilo ohm resistor sets the current to pretty much nothing for the most part so so what we're looking at here we're gonna look at that voltage again three point uh, so let's just say three point two make the math easy let's look at the voltage at the base it's that three point seven so it's about 0.5 volts higher which is a diode drop that's the voltage at the base so we're losing some of the voltage that we're already getting to the base so about 3.7 at the emitter it's uh, about a diode drop less which is what the emitter follower is made to actually do let's uh, yank this one and so now they're brighter uh, they're not terribly bright though but uh, it's, it's definitely a lot better than it was let's look at uh, the voltages we have now so we'll go to the resistor and you can see it's almost at 4.5 that we got without a load so this is a really weak load the uh, current that comes out of here so it's got a voltage 4.5 is as good as we can do it's putting a little current through this uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor the uh, base to emitter the LED the currents going through all these components so it's going to be really low and uh, so we are getting about 4.4 volts to the base but we're going to lose a diode drop at the emitter so about 3.8 so we are right back to where we are just powering the load directly from the output there which uh, is not what we wanted in this circuit and that's what the emitter follower is made for this again is a somewhat weak uh, voltage source not terrible you use it all the time especially with just like one LED and uh, but uh, we wanted five volts across the load for whatever and we're not getting that with the emitter follower we have to use the transistor switch so that's why when you have a switch you don't let any of the signal get affected by the load the uh, signal comes to the base of the transistor you want that to go directly to the negative rail and uh, we don't have that here we have the signal going to the base and then through the load which is weakening the signal and so it is good for setting a voltage you get the power supply voltage pretty nicely minus the diode drop one thing we can do to hopefully improve it is uh, to take the uh, diode drop out of the equation let's take a one kilo ohm resistor and put that from emitter to the negative rail you usually see that in the emitter follower circuit and I did find it helped in uh, one circuit that I made so let's see if that improved it at all with the uh, one kilo ohm so we gotta go to the uh, negative rail there look at the voltage at the base again so about 4.2 and no we still got that 3.5 which makes sense we had that diode drop so yeah usually uh, when I add the resistor take the measurements it doesn't make any difference I did have one time having that resistor from emitter to the negative rail did help let's uh, zoom in look at that a little closer it's at the emitter one spot down from this one to the uh, negative rail so any case that's the emitter follower does not make for a good switch at all 
it's good for a weak voltage source. So you give the voltage to the transistor, the transistor other than the diode drop transfers that voltage to the load and lets whatever current it needs to directly from the power supply to hold that voltage and uh, with a few other factors to deal with but for the most part it holds the voltage to the load providing the current that it needs to hold that voltage so the uh, signal does not have to tax itself it only has to provide the voltage hopefully just a speck of current and hopefully that doesn't alter it but in any case the point of this video was don't try to make a switch with the emitter follower as you can see here where the load is on the emitter side when you want to switch keep it on the collector side so hope that it all makes sense hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video